just saw Oppenheimer and Christopher Nolan has a lot of expositional and explanatory dialogue. What is on the nose dialogue? On the nose dialogue is dialogue that is generic. It is describing something that we could easily see that is clear in the scene. It's explaining something. Um, it's just kind of like lazy dialogue that doesn't uh, show that character's voice. Is there ever a time when it's okay to write on the nose dialogue? Every now and then you may have a complicated sequence that you want to help the reader check in and kind of orient themselves. So you might have a character say something, you know, um, why did you bring, you know, I told you to bring the red car, why did you bring the blue car, you know? Um, so then that reminds the reader that, oh, they switched cars back there, remember that, you know? Um, so you might want to plant something that is a bit on the nose. It, you know, I don't feel like a writer should feel the pressure to write, you know, Sorkin-esque dialogue for every single character. Every single character doesn't have, have to have incredibly stylized dialogue. Um, the show Succession does. Somehow they get away with it. Every character is clever and makes incredible quips just off the top of their head. And every character has um, really genius put downs of other people. But somehow it works on that show, but it doesn't work in most scripts where um, you don't want your characters to talk the same. You definitely don't want them to have the same style of dialogue. It, can it be done almost if it's kind of like making fun of itself? Like kind of a self-reverential dialogue? Or, or, or almost trying to, I don't even know what the word would be, but just certain things that are just, I wouldn't say campy, but you're trying to almost make it a joke. And so it's over the top, on the nose dialogue because it's sort of like a joke on itself. I mean, you could. There's, uh, you know, there's playing with the genre or winking to the audience that you might want to do. Yeah, it really, I mean, it really depends on the material. Sure. What if, you had said earlier that the characters should sound separate from each other. What if a writer is getting the note that all of their characters are sounding the same, but they think, no, these are all individuals? I've gotten that note too. It's tough because um, when you read your own work, uh, they seem distinctive, but to other people, sometimes they don't. Uh, you can, it might help to write down backstories for your characters. Um, it helps to read it aloud. It helps to have a reading with friends. Uh, I do readings over Zoom now, so it's really easy to do. Um, and just to hear it spoken out loud, I think does really help. But I think the main thing is to know your character's goals and their wants. Uh, in general, and then also in that particular scene. So then that will inform how they speak. You know, if they, if they want this out of that other character, they would talk in this way, you know, because they're trying to maybe sway the other character. Ideally, the audience is in on that too. It knows their wants. That was something that David Mamet always said. He said the only thing an actor needs to know is what they want in the scene, and ideally the audience knows that too. Doesn't always have to be. I mean, maybe you want to surprise us. Uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Vince Gilligan, um, and the writers on those shows, they do a really interesting style of discovery where at the end of each scene comes kind of like the reason why the scene existed. Like it, it's that moment of discovery um, that we didn't see coming and that that's truly the thing that advances the story. Before that, there's just really compelling character work, you know, and compelling dialogue. But at the end of the scene, we realize, oh, that's what, that's what he meant when he said that earlier, and that's what they were going for, and oh, I didn't see that coming. There's some kind of discovery. You know, that's how Walt is going to get out of this trap. Um, you'll see it if you watch, especially Better Call Saul. There's always that kind of discovery that they build up to in a scene, and it, it's really great work. How does the character's internal and external goal 
factor into their dialogue? It's very key for their dialogue. It's very important. Um, the, in, the external goal is their action goal, their physical goal that they need to achieve, kind of like the A story goal. Um, maybe it's the most obvious or most visual goal. And then the internal, like it says, it's going to be more emotional. It might be the love interest. It might be their family, or it might be just kind of a, a secondary active goal, but it's not as important as the, um, as the external. Unless later they flip and maybe the internal becomes more important than the external. If you know your character's external and internal goal, I think it's really going to help you write your dialogue because then you're writing their dialogue to show what they want and to get them actively toward their goal, you know. Um, we're sent I mean, we're essentially selfish people, so when we speak, it's because we're trying to get somewhere, we're trying to get something, you know. Uh, so it really helps to know their goals. What are your thoughts on monologues and screenplays? Don't make them too long. <laughs> um, I mean, I think maybe one or two long dialogue passages uh, are okay. But for, especially for new writers, you don't want to have super, super long dialogue blocks and too many monologues. Um, just saw Oppenheimer and Christopher Nolan has a lot of expositional and explanatory dialogue, but it makes sense because they're all scientists and they're going back and forth about all of these scientific topics and they're just giving detail after detail. Um, and it's, you, you are okay with it more because visually he's a stunning director, you know. Um, the big screen experience is important to him and I saw it in a the theater and it is interesting to watch. But on the page, I'm guessing there's just, it would just be so much long, long, long dialogue, on the nose dialogue scenes with so much exposition and I'd be like, oh my God, when are they gonna stop talking about fission versus fusion, you know. So a newer writer who doesn't have that track record, who isn't known for something like Aaron Sorkin might be known for monologues, but you're not. So you really want to um, keep the dialogue as tight as possible. Maybe with uh, you know, a few flourishes every now and then, maybe you do have a key uh, monologue um, once or twice in your script that uh, ideally it captures theme, it explores the theme, what your story's about. I didn't see Ty West's ex, but I've heard on Twitter, I've seen people just raving about, I think her name was Mia Goth, uh -huh. her, her ending sort of monologue, and they just said I, it yeah, was I fantastic. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Okay, um, yeah. But I mean, that's tricky to end a movie on a monologue and have it work. That is tough. Um, I actually have a client now, he has a very specific line he wants to end his whole feature screenplay with. And I don't think it works because I think it's too on the nose and it's him making a point. It feels like the writer's making a point and I say, it pulls me out, you know? Um, and we're supposed to feel good for this character. They have achieved their goal. They have come into themselves and they are more confident now and we're happy for that arc. And then he has this last line in which it's really negative. He's like calling out someone and basically, you know, saying, screw you. And he likes it. I don't like it. I think it's too negative because it's, a, it's mainly a comedy, the script. So, you know, it's a tough. Endings are tough. Bar There's a film called Barbarian also that was another low-budget horror film. And I don't think they really had a strong ending. It just evolved into kind of um, fighting, you know, just physical blocking. And I think it would have been great if they had worked on the script maybe a little bit longer and worked on that ending.